All right, we've got the car now out of the booth and you guys asked to see this one through the prep. So we're gonna continue this one on with the prep as well as the paint work. So the first thing we're gonna do is start getting this thing blocked down and sanded. And we're gonna be sanding this one with a fine block. We're gonna use probably a 600 grit on it because this car didn't have a lot of body work on it. You guys can remember here, I'll show you a picture of the fender was really mainly the biggest part of the actual body work that was on this thing. So we don't have to do a lot of blocking. All we did was prime this because we wanted a nice foundation for this paint job. So we're gonna go ahead and get it sanded. And you guys see here, I left it bagged up as much as I could. That way we'll leave all the dirt out of the inside of this thing. And once we get it sanded, you guys know we use the uh, Fest tool, which doesn't really have a lot of dust, but will alleviate a lot of dust from inside the crack. So we're gonna go ahead now and start sanding this one out and uh, showing you how I prep them for a paint job. All right, so you guys can see here that we have a guide coat on it. We hit it with a light mist of black for a guide coat. You guys know I like to use that because once the guide coat is gone, you know you're done sanding. So I also use it for imperfections, but to me, it's also a thing to uh, speed me up because sometimes you'll sand on a part too long and this will help that from happening. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing sanded. All right, so we're gonna start out with the block on the Festool. You guys see here, this is a vacuum block and we're gonna block it down with 600 now. You're gonna hear the uh, vacuum kick in, so you may not hear me talking as much, but that's where we're gonna start out with is the block. You wanna make sure that you block your primer down flat. This job here really isn't that crucial for that because like I said, all we were dealing with was really a faded paint job. So if you guys have a job at your house that has more of just a faded job, and you were able to take it down nice and easy, you don't really have to do as much blocking as if you had a lot of body work and dents all over that vehicle. So we're gonna focus on the fender now, which was basically the biggest area that we had of Bondo on this one. So let's go ahead and get this blocked out. All right, so I wanted you guys to see this here fender now after it's blocked. When you're doing these fenders, a lot of these newer cars are very round. There's a lot of contours to them. So you have to watch when you're blocking them not to leave gouges. Even though this block has a little bit of a cushion on it, it still could leave lines when you're blocking it. So you wanna make sure you take into consideration the shapes that you're using and the uh, way you're blocking down the part. And if you have something round, you might wanna move into a softer block that will let you get into these valleys and i'll show you that once we get to that stage so we're going to get this all sanded down and then i'll show you the rest of the steps all right now so you can see we have the fender fully blocked down we use the 600 on that on a block. To now make sure we don't have any of the uh, block marks, we're gonna refine that with a hook it pad on the DA, and that way we can go over all of the lines and make sure that this is smoothed out nice. All right, so we've got our DA now with our 600 on it, and we're not gonna have to guide coat this again because we use a 600 to block it. So if you're using a coarser grit and you wanna make sure that you're gonna refine that and get all the scratches out, you could also guide coat it now a second time and that way you know you have all your sand scratches of the 400 or if you're using something coarser like a 320 maybe you uh, started with that to get the body work straight on it so i'll show you now we'll refine this up around all the valleys and all the uh, bends and body lines that way we have no chance of having any block lines in it so you just want to go ahead and sand it All right, so you can see we didn't have to do much on that. We just want to try to knock down any line marks that we may have, but we want to leave as much primer on there as possible. So this is where we had the bare metal and we had a couple little spots of uh, filler on it. So you guys can see that most of the primer is still on the vehicle and that's how we're going to continue on the rest of this job. So watch me prep out the rest of this side and uh, we'll go over some of the other things that you want to make sure you do. That way you get a nice quality job. All right, now that we've got it all DA'd, 
we still have the tape and the plastic on the car and you guys know that i told you i hardline everything so now i'd like to take one side at a time that way you don't miss what you're doing sometimes if you start doing everything all over the car you'll miss stuff so what i like to do is focus on one side you guys see i blocked the fender then i da the fender then i blocked the door then i da the door and the same thing on the quarter so if you break it up into small parts you have less chance of forgetting or missing something so i usually handle one side at a time and now what we'll do is we'll pull our plastic and we'll go around all the edges that we have hard line for the actual primer so i know i had told you guys in the last video about the hard lining and i want to make sure that i make this clear so when you're doing an overall paint job i like to hard line my primer because I know I'm right up to the edge. But when you're doing a spot prime, you never want a hard line. You want to make sure that you have your paper way away from your body work. And you want to make sure that you have no primer up to your tape because no matter what you do, if you prime directly up to a hard line, you will see that if you do it on a car on the side. So always give yourself more area when you're priming, bigger than the actual repair. That way you can blend in your primer and you don't have any hard lines because that will never go away and years back on my first paint job i was actually in tech school and i painted my dad's suburban and the teacher said don't hard line it don't hard line it and i ended up not listening to him i hard line the rear doors on a black suburban and i never could live with myself knowing that there was a line on that door and uh i could always see it so that stays with me from back then to now that you never want a hard line up to your primer when you're spraying so Let's get the side of this thing taken back apart with the plastic and then hit our edges. That way we don't have any lines and I'll show you that. And you guys see that you have a hard line there now. But being I put that hard line right on the edge, it's not gonna take nothing for me to knock that down. So one thing I am gonna do is put a little tape because I'm not sure where I'm gonna stop this at. I may take this into one of the lines in here. That way this is nice and clean when we do the spraying on this. So. I haven't made my mind up yet on where I'm going to actually lose this. So we're going to tape it right here while we sand that. That way we don't get in too far and have a problem with it. So just take your tape, run it a little bit further in from the actual area. And this is just to show you guys what I'm talking about. Because we may be going in a little further on this. Now that we're in a little bit further than the line, we can knock the line down and not get too far into this to where you're into having to paint more on the jam. So. This car here, I may go in all the way on this one, depending on the best, uh, you know, thing. For each job, you have a different way of doing things. So let's go ahead and knock the edge down. Now when I do the edges, I like to just take a little bit of a DA pad on a scotch bright and just go ahead and knock them down by hand. I don't DA them or block them. They come down nice and easy because I make sure that I put that line right on the actual edge of the quarter panel. That way, it's just quick to knock down. You don't want to put it out too far and you don't want to go in too far. You want to get it right on the line when you're doing this type of a job here. So we'll knock it down. We'll run around all the edges of where we taped it around the wheelhouses. We're going to open up the doors and make sure we catch the same thing like we're doing here. Get all your edges knocked down because you don't want to have an edge that's not knocked down on this and then have a problem after you get it in the booth. Because if you're doing a metallic job, you can really see the edges with a solid color, it's not so bad, but we'll just knock it down. All right, so we've got the same thing here now on the jam. You guys see we have the hard line. I made sure I ran it right along the edge. That way we don't have to sand the jam and we're not gonna have a line on the edge of the quarter panel. So run it right along the edge. And with this, you don't have to worry about taping it too much because you have this, but you guys might want to. I like to just sand it right on the edge facing this way here and keeping my sandpaper out of the actual jam that way you don't have to spray the jam on it so this is how it goes down we've sand the parts down then we go around all the edges make sure we don't have any lines and continue that around the whole job that way you get this thing prepped out nice fast and it's done one time so that's the procedures on this so far and we'll get the rest of it all finished up and same thing here on the edge you guys seen we ran the tape close up to the edge just in case you have any bits on the edge here I like to take my sandpaper and I run it along the edge this way here that way if anything happened to bridge over from the tape you've got it cut down nice 
and you don't have any trouble with it. So same thing here, make sure you hit all your edges. And then we'll do the same thing around all the edges up in the front as well, where we had the cardboard. Sometimes the cardboard can leave a little bit of buildup and then we'll knock that down the same thing. So you don't wanna just focus on the flat areas. Your edges can be more important sometimes than the actual middle of your panels because you're going over these a lot and sometimes your edges, you'll miss something on them and in a metallic that'll really show up. So you wanna make sure you double check it and that's why it's nice to do one side at a time. And that way, you know, once you get over there, this is done. So we're gonna finish up getting this thing all edged out, sanded, and then we'll move on to the other side. All right, so now that I got all the edges sanded down, the final step, once everything is completely blocked, DA'd, all the edges are sanded out, is I like to hit it with my sky pad because this is a flexible or pad, which really works well on getting all around any little crevices around the door handle holes, up on top by the belt moldings, and around any little valleys around the wheelhouse. This is a really good product from Kovacs. And this is the K600. This is more like an 800 grit, but it's called a K600. They're a little bit finer than the actual seam, but this will be my final prep on the side of this. So I'll run around this one last time and then this whole side here will be prepped out. All right, I wanted to show you guys, I decided to take this all the way into the pinch weld on it. And we're gonna lose it right here along the factory seam. We'll scuff this up a little bit more. I'll mask up these clips because we don't want them to break. And uh, we'll paint it all the way in. That way when the lift gate is up, you won't have any line at all on this here vehicle. So we did the same thing up here towards the uh, glass on the roof. You guys remember we hard lined it over there and then we brought it back, scuffed down in the channel. Make sure you get down in your channels good. That way you don't have any chance of peeling. So like I always tell you guys, you got to do each job based off of what kind of vehicle you're doing and what kind of job you're doing. So this one here made more sense to take it all the way in. Your car may be different than this. Most cars don't have this flat edge on it. They have a regular trunk, so you can easily lose it with a fold tape. But on this being such a visible part and you can almost see it from the outside of the vehicle once the hatch is on it i want to go ahead and paint it all the way in so to me there's no one way of doing a job the only right way to do it is the right way so once you get figured out what you're going to do you'll you'll go around that car and you'll know once you get it in the booth you're all a1 so let's finish it up ready to go we'll mask it inside the booth that way i can get more area here to prep out this tailgate and you do have a couple other parts to prep for the car that i didn't show you guys that we had primer prior to that last video so let's get the rest of these things knocked down and in the booth same thing 600 block and then hit it with the da to refine it this has got a lot of roundness to it so we're definitely going to want to use the interface pad on this one so let's do it I know I taped this up without you guys, but I wanted to save you the headache of listening to me because these are never fun doing these fine line bumpers. This has got the uh, black mat you got to tape up. And uh, what I did here was just use my normal inch and a half tape and then fine lined it around the uh, edges. That way, before it's fully dry, you want to pull the fine line off. So we went ahead and sanded this one out the same way we did the car and then did the uh, fine line and the tape, and now the bumper's ready to go. So we got a couple more parts to get ready, and then we'll be in the booth. All right, so we've got the car now in here, and we've got the rest of the parts. So we did end up doing the uh, top caps that go onto the roof. That way it lines up and matches 
These are a new part that came in red, but we want to make sure that they match as well as the rear spoiler. And the only thing we're not doing on this are the rockers and the rear bumper. They were done before at a different shop and they are freshly painted. So we're going to be matching our color up to that new freshly painted back bumper on this one. And then this whole car will basically be all fresh and clean. So these reds take a beating out there in the Florida sun and anyone that has a red car can definitely see the difference in their car once it ages it starts to pink out and it'll almost milk out the clear coat so let's get that hood on bag and then uh we'll be getting this thing ready to wrap up all right so this is my favorite part because this work is already done now all i have to do is unbag this and then we'll just lightly scuff it just in case this here has any kind of residue left over from it treating the metal on this so sometimes it's nice to get something like this done ahead of time because with all that work going on you definitely don't want to have to strip this now so we'll get this unwrapped and then we'll uh get it in the booth all right so we went ahead and ran our two inch tape around the bottom of the hood we back taped it we stuck it to the back of this then we run our paper around and fold it down so just make sure you tuck this down around your edge there's nothing difficult about this. That's why I didn't show you doing it. So back tape it, run your paper around or plastic, whatever you guys feel comfortable with. Same thing on the lift gate. We went ahead and did the same thing on this. Back tape around the bottom and then fold it down. That way you have like a curtain running around this and it uh, keeps the overspray off of the bottom of this thing. I like using the 36 paper on these because it almost runs all the way down to the uh, filters there. So. That's the way I do the parts on here. And then we're gonna be masking up the jams now. And now's when you're gonna to wanna to use the fold tape. So you wanna get a smooth edge from your quarter panel into your jam on this. So that's where we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of a special fold tape that I've showed you guys before. If you haven't seen it, we'll show you on this one again, but we're gonna run that in there. We're gonna be running it up to here, like I had told you. That way we don't have any tape lines on this when this fellow opens up his hatch. And then uh, we'll be back masking the fenders, back masking around here. You guys know I like to back mask and use plastic. To me, that's the fastest, cleanest way of getting a nice job. Once you seal everything up tight, you don't have any gaps. So you don't have to worry about having too much dirt because you seal it up real tight with the plastic. And to me, that's gotten me the best, cleanest work. So let's go ahead and wrap it up so we're going to start in the back i like to start more in the back of the vehicle especially when it's a four door that way you'll get your doors closed up and you won't have to worry about interfering with the next panel so on this one being it's a two door we're going to start in the back so i like to run my tape along the body lines where this is actually made together i never want to have lines in areas that you could tell we did something to it so find a body line find where they have their seam sealer and then run it nice along there. That way, once this is finished up, you won't have any problems. So you see that we have that running straight along the seam. Now here, we'll back tape this. So now we'll have no lines and we won't have anything showing that we painted it. It'll be a nice, clean job and uh, everything will look nice once this is lifted up. Same thing on this here, I'll show you. See so here the seam sealer line where the roof skin meets up to the quarter. We're gonna run it right along here on this and you won't have any evidence that we painted it so go to your lines of your panels where they're separated at and that way you'll have a nice clean job with it so let's get this back of this taped up and then i'll show you what we do on the jams all right same thing here on this gas pocket you guys see where the outer quarter panel skin comes along to the inner we're going to tape it nicely around this whole thing that way there's no evidence that we did it so sometimes you can paint in here this one we're not it's got all the uh attachments still on it and it's not necessary so we'll back tape it up and around here and then we'll run it right along here and i'll show it to you guys in a second all done all right so that's it's all done and you would think this isn't a big deal but this is an area that the owner is going to be at all the time filling up in his car so you want to make this nice and clean you guys see we have this now taped up to the actual skin of the quarter panel, back taped it all around. That way now, when we're painting this here, we're painting up in here and it's gonna have a nice clean edge. So those are the things that are gonna define your job when it's done and make it look like a really nice 
job. So let's finish up the back of this here. All right, so now's our time when we're gonna do our jam on it. So make sure you clean your jams out. We've wiped this down, we've cleaned it. And I like to keep a rag with me. That way you can clean as you're going if you have to get a little bit of a spot cleaned up. So what I do on my jams is this area here, you guys can see where the weather strip goes, where it's stained. This is actually stained into the paint. That's the area you need to cover. So I like to use tape. I don't really use a lot of paper because sometimes when you close this, it'll pinch it, it'll pull it back and you'll have a gap. So I've only got a little strip here to worry about. So I use my two inch tape and that way it conforms nice and it keeps it from having any overspray on it. So we're gonna run it now and then I'll show you what I do on my fold tape. That way we get a nice edge. All right, so you can see now what I was telling you, the tape sucks down nice and you'll have no chance once that door is closed that it wants to bunch up the paper and now have a gap in it. So now's where we're gonna do our fold tape. And you guys see, I ran a hard line inside the actual valley there with the same amount, exactly perfect running down. That's in case you do have a problem. You wanna make sure that you run your tape nice and straight and smooth. If you did have some overspray where this happened to not work perfectly, which it usually works very good, at least you're gonna have a nice continuous line inside this here where the overspray will stop inside that valley and you'll have a better chance of polishing it out. So now's where we're gonna do our fold tape. And uh, they make machines for this. I've showed you guys before. I just run it on my pants leg and boom, pull it. And that's gonna give you a nice fold on the edge of your tape, which is gonna let this flutter. It's not gonna be sticky up to the edge. It's gonna have this fold in it which is gonna let the tape, once it gets on here, have a little bit of give in it. So the wind's gonna be able to blow this from the air of the gun and just put in a nice clean line. So now we'll run that with a little bit of the uh, edge showing. So that way you're not sticking this too far out. You wanna make sure you get it right there like that, nice and straight and even. This is a crucial part of the job. That way when you're done, you don't have to smoke your jams. All right, see how nice and straight that looks? And you guys see here that it wants to pull just a little bit. What we do is we take our little bit of tape and we put it on here. That way, while I'm getting the rest of this thing ready, it's holding it nice and tight and close and it will actually conform by just putting that little tape on there to the actual quarter panel and keep it nice and tight. So see how this here weather strip, it's the same thing. You only have to worry about masking up to the actual gasket because once this gasket seals up, there's no chance of getting overspray. So same thing on this. There's no need for paper and you have two inch tape. It almost covers the whole thing. So you'll get it nice and tight and you'll have no chance of closing this up and this paper pulling back away. Thing on this, make sure you run this nice and straight. That way in case you did have a little bit of overspray, it's gonna be nice and straight. Don't take it too far in, take it nice on the edge and maybe even run it. Sometimes they have their seam sealer here. You can run it right along this. On the bottom, all we have to do is back tape it, being that this has a rocker panel. If you were doing a car with a continuous rocker, you'd have to finish it off like we did here on this. You just run it the same way all the way down with your fold tape. But on this one, we get to back mask it and it's a lot easier. So, all right, so now we're gonna mask up this area here and you guys see it has no overspray when we did the primer with that little trick from the cardboard. So we do run some tape in here. That way we don't overspray as much in here on the actual jam on this car here. So we'll run our two inch tape there as well. And then we'll be able to close the door up and uh, back mask the rest of this side. All right, now we'll go ahead and close our door up and you guys will see that the back masking is on here. It lines up to the actual side of the quarter panel here. Once we close this, we'll have a nice continuous seal that'll be nicely contained to keep all the dirt out of this one. So we'll go ahead and close it. And then we'll just pull that back a little bit and attach it to this here and get that seam nicely sealed up tight. So now we'll back tape the top edge of the door here. We'll get this in here and we'll back mask around everything. That way we have no tape lines. This will be nice and clean in case somebody ever took the handle out you'll have no evidence of a paint job, so. All right, so we've got it all back masked now. We ran around the whole fender, around the wheelhouse. Make sure you can get to your edges of your lip around here to get paint all the way up. So now on the windshield, normally we would have our glass removed, but this car has a molding that is able to be taken off and put back on later. So 
we won't have any bridging. So you guys see, we took the quarter glasses out, glass on the hatches out. We wanna make sure we get a nice clean job and it's very crucial to that, taking your glass out if you're able to. So it's really not as much money as you think if you call in a glass company to pull out your windows because that's what's gonna make or break a really nice job. You don't wanna see edges of moldings with paint on them or paint build up. Sometimes it'll get caked on and you'll have bridging to molding. So check in with your local glass company and maybe you guys would want to have it removed. That way you can get a really nice job. So we're gonna do the same thing on the other side and then we're gonna bag it up and then we'll be cleaning it and getting this thing shot. We'll run the bag over it, we'll cut everything out and then we'll be ready to clean this one. All right, so you can see how now the booth sucked it down because this is a downdraft spray booth. Now what you'll do is take a blade, be careful when you're running your blade, not to scratch or cut any glass or moldings if you have any of that on the vehicle, but you'll just run it along. I like to have my fingers like this as a little bit of a guide so I don't push down too hard. On this, it's not gonna be a problem because we're running it off of the edge. But when you're doing a blend on a car, you gotta be careful not to cut the adjacent panel. All right, the car is all bagged. Now we're gonna get into our prep salt and we're gonna hit it with the wax and grease. Use gloves, that way you don't get it on your hands as well as transferring oils. I see a lot of guys asking why I run over the car once I'm done cleaning it with my hands. I wash my hands before I feel over the job. I've been doing this for 28 years with my hand on the job, checking for dirt before we tack it. No problems with it. So wash your hands. It's not like I'm going out and eating a big calzone and then rubbing them on the actual paint. So let's get this thing cleaned up. Wet your towel. This is the microfibers. This is the way that I do it now. And I learned this from guys online. This really gives a thorough cleaning of the panel with these microfibers. And uh, I've liked this system now. So that's all I use now is microfibers. I get a bag of these, wipe it on with a wet rag of the prep saw and wipe it off. So one rag is wet, one rag is dry. Clean it nice. As you're cleaning your job now, you wanna be double checking everything, looking for anything you find that may be needing to be addressed. On the hood itself, we're gonna be using the alcohol-based cleaner. We're not gonna use the waterborne on the hood because this is bare metal. And this is an alcohol-based cleaner that works really nice here on these bare metal parts. So we'll clean this one. This is the one we're gonna use a different product on as well as when we paint this, we're gonna be using the epoxy. All right, so that's the sealer. We used the epoxy, the DP on the hood for the bare aluminum, and then we went into our normal ECS sealer for the body of that. So that's how I handle them. I like the way the ECS lays down a little bit better than the epoxy, but being that's a flat hood, you're not gonna have any problem with it. So now that we had our sealer on the car, we'll be moving into the base coat. And I just wanna tell you one little point when you're spraying your sealers. You guys see, I didn't really pound it on. And when I was going by my jams, I actually had my gun turned, that way they're not blowing hard into the jams on that. You wanna just kinda of go by the jams with the gun turned a little bit and not try to blast it inside the cracks because if you get that sealer in too far, you're gonna have trouble covering it up with your red. So we're gonna get this thing flashed off and we'll move into our red.
All right, so that's two coats of base. You guys see that color cover is unbelievable in the water base. So that's A54 red. And uh, we're gonna let that flash. I turn the heat up a little bit just to kick off the base. And then we're gonna go in and clear it with our 2021 clear with the DV1 with the 1.3 at 24 PSI. And we're gonna give it two nice wet coats of clear. And you guys let me know when it's all done. What do you guys think of it? All right, so that's the 370Z with the A54 paint coat on it. Came out really nice and clean. We are gonna do one more video on it, on doing a couple of the nibs that you guys might have seen. There's only maybe one or two nibs in this job. It came out beautiful. So we're gonna do the final buffing on it. We're gonna assemble the car, and then we're gonna show it to you guys all finished up out front, because I know a lot of you guys say you wanna see the finished product. So we're gonna get it all assembled. We'll get it nibbed, we'll get it out front, and you guys will let me know what you think of it. So. I hope you guys like these videos so far. Make sure you stay tuned for the last one of the final build on this one here and what we do to get these things all ready for the customer. So we'll see you guys on the next one.